Excellent God, let your glory be revealed. Let your mysteries be made known. In the name of Yeshua, I thank you today. I give you praise. I give you the glory and the honor. Salvation and strength, power and might, wisdom and honor is yours. Oh, excellent God. Excellent God. Excellent God. Excellent God. I love you, excellent God. I love you, marvelous Savior. I love you. There's none that can do these things that thou doest except you be with them. In the name of Jesus. Father, have, have your way. Stretch out your hands. Look upon this, your children. Bless us to do thy will, O God. Move upon us today. In the mighty name of Jesus. We are nothing without you. We are nothing. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing without you. It is in you that we live, in you that we move, in you that we have our being. We're saying, Father, thou hast done marvelous things, wherein we're glad that thou hast helped us and blessed us and gave us this opportunity to be here today. Thank you, excellent God. Thank you, marvelous Savior. Thank you for thy truth. Thy word is true. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for caring for us. Thank you for helping us. Thank you for your hands stretched out still. Thank you, excellent God. Thank you for giving us this testimony. Oh, Father. Oh, Father. Oh, Father. Abba, Abba, Father. Abba, Father. And we are found in you. There's no other place we would rather be but right where we are in the mansion's will of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, thank you, thank you for hewing us out of doubt. Thank you for snatching us out of sin. Thank you for turning our lives around. Thank you for establishing our going. In the name of Jesus, we bless you. We glorify you. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord, the of the Lord. hallelujah. Hallelujah, excellent God. Hallelujah, marvelous Savior. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah to the will of God. Hallelujah. 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 Wonderful Savior. Wonderful God. Everlasting Father. Oh, the Prince of Peace. We give you the praise. We give you the praise. We give you the praise right now. We give you the praise and the glory and honor is yours. We give you praise. We give you praise. Ah, Jesus. Oh, wonderful Savior. Oh, wonderful God. Oh, wonderful God. Wonderful God. Wonderful God. Wonderful God. Wonderful God. Wonderful God. In the name of Yeshua. We thank you today. We give you praise. We give you the 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 praise. We give you praise, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Bless your name, excellent God. Bless your name. Bless your mighty name, your awesome name, your wonderful name. Oh, Jesus, there's none like you. Oh, Jesus, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. I love you. I bless you. I glorify you. I magnify you. 
in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, excellent God. 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 Hallelujah, wonderful Savior. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lamb of God who takes away all of the sins of the world. Hallelujah, excellent God. Hallelujah, marvelous Savior. Hallelujah. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, wonderful Savior. Thank you, wonderful Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you. Thank you for being God to us. Thank you for bringing us, oh God, to this place of prayer, a place of intercession. Thank you for bringing us here. Thank you for establishing our goings. Thank you, excellent God. Thank you, marvelous Savior. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you now, and we give you the praise and the glory. The honor is yours. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, we thank you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Oh, Father, thank you today. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for giving us this moment a time that we can come before you and tell you thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord God. I thank you. I give you praise. I give you the glory. I give you the honor. In the name of Jesus, we celebrate you. We celebrate you in truth. We celebrate you in righteousness. We celebrate you this day. In the name of the Lord, thank you for being good to us, kind to us. Thank you for your healing virtue now. Thank you for healing us, oh, where we hurt. Thank you for healing us 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 where we're hurting. In the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. Heaven smile upon you. In the name of Jesus. God bless you to your past, uh, uh, woman of God. Thank you, Bobby Faith Jones, Lifeline. Thank you for being with us, Lifeline. Thank you, uh, YouTube. Thank you, YouTube, for being with us. Facebook Live, God blessings to you. Amen. Father, we thank you for Layla Anderson. We thank you for her life, her health, and her strength. We thank you for Jennifer Harris, God, for her faithfulness. We thank you for her family. Thank you for what you've done for her and what you're doing even right now. We thank you for this woman of God, Deborah Cooper. Father, we thank you for her life. Thank you for Deborah Cooper's life, God. Thank you for her determination to do your divine will. Father, let there be healing, 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 rapid, quick, corresponding healing, even right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, heal where it hurts, take away the pain, heal the wound, the deep, soothing healing. Let it be a deep, seething, a soothing healing. God, that come from the bosom of the Father. I thank you for what the enemy meant for evil. God, hallelujah, turn it for good. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for how you're doing it now. Thank you, Lord. God, thank you. Thank you for victory, because victory is ours, and we give you praise for it. In Jesus' mighty name, the Lord heal you, woman of God. The Lord heal all of you, the Lord's people. Layla Anderson, Jennifer Cooper, Deborah Cooper, uh, Jennifer Harris, I'm sorry. Jennifer Harris and Deborah Cooper. The Lord blessings to you, each one of you. Love you all. Thank God for you. Amen. And uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for giving us this opportunity that you thought in our robbery. Amen. To rest here with us as we go forth in the word of the Lord. This is the lesson today that we want to talk about, and uh, we've already taught this lesson. The last time we were here, it was already included in, um, matter of fact, when we did 1 Thessalonians 4, we did all of it together. We did 1 through 18, 1 through 18, but uh, we wanted to come back and look at it again and um, and and look at the entire, well, not entire lesson, but even though we did one through 18, 
I want to go back and start off with verse number 11. Yeah, and in, in the, the first part of it, we, we, we wanted to submit a secret thought and plan the Lord have concerning you. A thought that the Lord have concerning his people. We talked about it. Then I also talked about concern, my concern about you that to be rooted within the system of your faith. We talked about the system of faith. Yeah, but today we want to come back. We want to pick up with verse number 11. We want to look at that. And uh, we want to call this concrete faith. Now, there's not a scripture here that tells us, well, you know, faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You're not looking at it like that written where it talks directly about faith. It doesn't talk directly about faith, but indirectly about faith. And that's what we want to look at. And so we want to talk, we want to call this concrete faith, faith which is not phased by the doubts of others. Je uh, 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 Zeddy Anderson, I see you. Faith which is not phased by others. Shirley Kennedy, faith which is not phased by, uh, by the doubts of others. Yeah, by the doubts of others. Faith which is not phased by the doubts of others. This, this faith here does not lose its credentials because somebody else in the group lost their faith credentials. Yeah. This faith holds on. This faith endures. This concrete faith, we're going to call it concrete faith. And while we're speaking on concrete faith, somebody's faith is being established right now. Somebody's faith is catching wings right now. Somebody's faith is being reinserted into the soils of righteousness and it's getting ready to blossom again while it's... Uh, Matter of fact, it's not, it's not that it's out of season, but that faith that even though this was not your season for your faith to blossom, it was not your season for your faith to blossom, but because this concrete faith, this is that faith that will blossom in any season. This is that faith that it doesn't necessarily have to have the right season to blossom, but it'll blossom in a season that was not even dictated for it, was not even purposed for it, was not even designed for it to work. And it's going to work whether it's a season of uh, drought or a season of plenty. This faith is going to work. This is that faith that is, is not hinging on uh, my faith. Your faith, Shirley, this is where your faith is going to work even when James Williams' faith is having some issues. Yeah, this faith is going to work, uh, uh, evangelist Janice Woods, when somebody else's faith look like it's running on four flats and a, 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 a busted engine. <laughs> Y'all go hear me. <laughs> this faith right here, right here, right here. This is that faith that you need to work for you when everybody else is, is taking a vacation. Everybody else's faith like say, you know what, we're faith out. We're faith out, we're faith out, we're faith out. Leave me alone, leave me alone. Don't tell me no more. Don't holler at me. Leave me alone. I'm faith out. I'm not doing nothing else. Stephen Hanks, this, that concrete faith, faith which is not faith by the doubts of others. This is that faith that you got to anchor it, bunker it down, hold on, latch on to something. This is that faith that you feed it. Uh, this is the faith what you feed is going to hold on to it and let nobody else shake this. This is that foundational faith, foundation faith. And I just want to simply build on it. I told you this lesson was spoken on last time we came with the lesson. Now, I, I, we didn't come with the lesson the last time. We just got a little excited we wanted to exalt the people of God. And then there was, um, uh, we have a Bible study uh, uh, on Bible study every day, every day at 9 a.m. in the morning. And uh, that's our Lifeline Bible study hour at 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And we have different teachers, different ones that go in. And they ask us about a question about uh, are there any virtuous 
women still among us? <laughs> they asked us that. Can you believe that, Evelyn Carter? Do you, can you believe they asked us that, Janice Woods? Can you believe that they asked that question, Nicole Bolden? Are there any... Are there any uh, uh, virtuous women left among us? Where are they? Yeah, I'm not going to stay here, right here where I'm at. I'm not going to stay here very long. I'm getting ready to shift to our lesson. But let me just indulge you with this for a moment. Because they asked that question, Janice Woods, are there any, are there any uh, virtuous women left among us today? I heard that. You know, I felt all of a sudden taken. I felt out of place. I felt that I was not the one appropriate to even deal with the lesson. I'm like virtuous women, you know, it's a virtuous woman thing, you know, and, and I'm looking at that and I'm feeling so not prepared to teach that lesson. And matter of fact, it wasn't even a lesson to teach. It was just a comment that I was supposed to make. And uh, after looking at the thing, I said, Lord, I, I need you to help me. And the Lord says, so why can't you do it? <laughs> and it says, uh, it's not the women that seeking virtuous women. It was the men that seeking virtuous women. And so, number one, the men is the pursuer. He he already know what he's looking for. Uh, and, and, now, we're not going to go through the whole um gamut of the lesson here. No, we're not going to do it. We got something else to teach on, but... I just want to talk about this briefly because this is the last lesson I spoke on. And then I said that uh, this will be the last lesson. Now, the last lesson we talked about was that uh, virtuous, we were giving remarks rather about virtuous women and, and et cetera. But this lesson was already taught. We just wanted to come back and snatch something out of it. But that virtuous woman thing, it's not the women that's looking for a virtuous woman. It is the man that's looking for a virtuous woman. And let me just say this for all of you who are listening and just wondering what, what, what my take is on that. Uh, you got to understand that I know what the scripture says. And the scripture is like a standard. It is like a standard of uh, one that is speaking. And the one that's writing about this is a king. And the king is writing about a virtuous woman. And then you're going to also find out that virtuous women, they differ from the hunter. Every hunter who is in pursuit of a virtuous woman is going to see that differently because everyone is not going to look for the same exact thing. But the one who is in pursuit of her, he's not looking for a flop. He's not looking for something that uh, that he cannot keep. He's definitely looking for a keeper. And when you found one that is a keeper and you enjoy coming home to, whether you got bald head or no or hair or no hair, hair or no hair, and you enjoy coming back to her, he strokes, she strokes your, the little, little palate of your brain and uh, make you feel good about yourself and vice versa. And maybe he have no teeth, but when you come before her, she make you feel as if you got a full rack. Whereas you got flat foot, flat feet, and you just know you got some issues there. But in her presence, she make you feel like you're a total man. Yeah, when you got a, a squeaky voice, she make you feel like your voice is all bass and, 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 and barrel tone. <laughs> that you the woof woof of the house. Yeah, and even though your voice is squeaky, but she don't even let you know it. She just make you feel that you are the one for her and vice versa, vice versa. Uh, that that virtuous woman talked about, she takes her finances and she go and purchase these things and all this. And then you have to ask the question, if she's a housekeeper, then where is she getting her finances from? She's getting the finances from the one that are out laboring and working and uh but because she have um built such a rapport with him he she already knows she don't have to beg him because he know she he know what time it is when he comes home he know where to lay the money where to put it he know exactly what to do with it so she already have it at his at her disposal and he trusts her 
to not even have to worry about what's happening. He trusts her to not even worry about what are you getting. Amen. Amen. So we thank God for that. Uh, Sandy, Sandy Beach says, uh, we thank God for you, Sandy. Thank God for you being here. Sandy said, I had a foster mother who always builds her husband. Up. Oh, say that, say that, say that. Say that, Sandy. We, we appreciate you. She said, I had a foster mother who always built her husband up. And from that, you learn some things. You learn some things. And I trust that'll go with you. Tank Styles. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. The missing link. That rib. You better talk about that. Yeah. So w the people are listening and you got to understand that in this, what builds, it builds that oneness. It builds that union. It builds that friendship. It builds the laughter. It builds just the, the silliness in good. That's right. You don't always hear about the silliness in good, but it builds the silliness in good. Not that derogatory silliness, but the silliness in good. Whereas this is that silliness that just makes you giggle and laugh at just whatever. It's a good moment. It's a good vibe. It doesn't have to be humorous. It doesn't, it, because this, this silliness, this here, it's not based upon what was said. It's based upon how it looks and how it fits. And how it fits like a glove. And yeah, that Mr. Romeo, that sister Juliet blends together. And they become uh, a force to be reckoned with. A virtuous, virtuous woman. Virtuous woman. They are built but they are not built if you don't build them. Mothers, if you don't build them. Fathers, if you don't safeguard them, they are not built. That's where we leave them off. And how they are built, they are built from love, from the, from the love of the parent up. They are birthed in and they are loved up. As you're birthed in and loved up, you keep building on that and they can't get away from it. <laughs> they can't get away from that right there. Why? Because they're immersed in it. And I want to call it, you know, like you baptized one in water. No, you, you, you just love ties them. You just love ties them and you, you basically confident ties them. Yeah. And protect ties them. You know, I'm just building, I'm putting all my words in there, Pastor Deborah Cooper. You know, you, you're not going to find these words in your thesaurus or the dictionary, but that's okay. They're going to work today because you just went and, um, um, yeah, emerged ties them in you, in goodness. And because of that, they don't want to do nothing else. So what happens? They're going to do what they've been taught to do, to love. To, to care, to protect. And us men, yeah, I said us men, we have to go back to the drawing board and do what God has ordained us to do. The Bible talks about how giants were born. The Bible talked about how uh, the sons of God, and they were not, you know, like men were sons of God. They were not Seth son descendants no they were fallen angels exactly what they were they saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they went into them they choose whatever they want whoever they wanted and they went into them and that right there you can stop at that passage of scripture and you can work with it why is that because there was some open doors that was not protected there were some open gates that was not protected who were responsible for the gates? Who were responsible for the doors? The fathers, the priests. We were responsible for who would come in, who would go out. The woman is the womb. She protects her womb. But we are to protect her. She protects the womb. We protect her. She's responsible for um, who she brings forth in the world. And we have to be responsible for uh, uh, 
um, um, also for what we allow her to bring forth because it is when the man and the woman get together and 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 have a love uh, 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 the, the Bible says it this way when they come into each other. <laughs> I like the way that Bible says it said when they when they come into each other, they yeah, they knew that's it. They, they knew each other. That's when you really know each other. You don't really know them until you know them. The Bible says, and she and, and he knew his wife. He knew his wife. So when you knew her, that's when that you're supposed to bring that together. Because then you're responsible for your actions and what you've done. But when you don't hold the gate, when you don't protect the gate, don't protect the door, you allow anything to come in. And that's what happened there. So we have to, the virtuous woman, in order for her to be virtuous, she need protection. She need the, uh, uh, she need a room to work, to will, to do, to blossom, just like a flower, need oxygen, um, the air, the rain, the sun. She need to be connected to the uh, the stem of the flower. And then when that happens, she's going to blossom and make it beautiful. Whereas it would not have been beholden. It would have not been something worth looking at. But now she got something on there dangling at the top of the, the little leaf. And it's beautiful and make one stop, want to pick it up and sniff it, and you and you be in you in in just all the aroma of the sweetness or the nectar of the flower. And this is what that virtuous woman brings to um the pursuer of her. Yeah, this is what she brings. We we thank God for that moment. I just wanted to just lay there for a moment and just uh, bask in it. Yeah. Let, let, me, let me see what you're reading again, uh, writing again there, saying that she said when he came in, yeah, okay, when he came in downstairs, she said, oh honey, can I get you a coffee? This is nothing compared to what you have faced before you will get through this. The Lord know he's your help. Amen. 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 I, I like that because see, here's the, here's the thing. You you need that help me that understand. Not with you. They're not with you 24-7, but they understand. They understand. They understand that we're going to make this, if we're going to make hurdles, if we're going to become entrepreneurs, if we're going to do these things, then long as I got that support element, that support element that understands and look like what you see, you see the vision but they also see the vision. You see one dynamic of the vision, but they see the other dynamic of the vision. You see where I'm going. I'm focused. I've got to get to... I've got to get to Mars. <laughs> I got to get to Mars, but you don't know how to get to Mars. But she got all the intricate detail worked out. Well, you're going to need a vehicle. You're going to need a spacecraft. You're going to need the money to fund the spacecraft. You're going to need a seat because the journey is going to be too long for you. And then you're going to need uh, some extra clothing in the suit because when you get there, it's going to be too hot. And you're going to need a, a, a sweater for Mars. You're going to need, <laughs> Jesus. You're going to need some sandwiches when you get there because I don't want nobody, I don't want everybody in Mars trying to cook for you. So I need, I need you to eat my food from Earth. So when you get to Mars, you don't have to worry about who's going to feed me. No, and then I need you to take this right here. And you got, and then, and then wraps all that up. See that that's that support element. You just want, you just know he just know he got to get to Mars, but he don't know how she's getting there. And that support element done worked out everything else. So, baby, what time you say you're going to Mars? Oh, okay, next week. All right. <laughs> and then when it's time to go, you go, and you don't even hold up, hold up. You didn't even think it through. You didn't even think what you need to do in order to get there. And and some of the uh, so what happens? I don't even know why I'm still talking on that. So this is not my lesson today. I don't even know. But then you get to that place, and you look at those single women who look like they just can't stop. They're like a little ant, always doing things, always buying things, getting things, putting this up, 
undoing this, doing that, undoing that, every day, just doing things. And like, what in the world? Just fix it and set. Just get it together, sit down and chill. But they can't because something is missing in their life. The other dynamics, the other matrix who they are supposed to support. Yeah, but when they're together, they it's like a yeah, a glove that Yeah. Yeah, it was designed for a hand. A glove that was designed for a hand. That's what it was. A glove that was designed for the right hand. So to encouragement to all those that have been working and working and working and look like you're a busy body, you don't understand why. Why am I so busy? Why am I always doing things? Why am I always planning things? Why am I always this and always that? Got this going on, got that going on, and yeah, you know why. And if you don't know why, the pursuer that's looking for you know why. <laughs> they know why. They know the time of day. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for allowing us to laugh with you. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for what you're doing. We thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for bringing everything into scope, everything into view, everything in your timing. And there are times where we want something a certain way and it's just not working that particular way. Father, help us to move out of the way and allow the right one who the real belong to to step forward. <laughs> well, the, the, the real owner of this rib, will you please step forward? Yeah, while you're trying to find a match, you say, here I am, here I am. You're looking over yonder. You're looking over yonder. You, you're the rib, but you're looking over yonder, but you forgot. The one that you really belong to is over here on this side. <laughs> yeah, you trying to give that rib to somebody else who, yeah, he done ribbed out. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> he ribbed out. If I may say it that way, Pastor Cooper, you trying to give your rib to somebody, you trying to give that rib to somebody who ribbed out. They can't have a rib. They wanted a rib. They ribbed out. Yeah. So we have to watch out, people. You're trying to give your rib. You the rib. You're trying to give yourself to a rib. Uh, you, you, uh, somebody who exhausted all of their opportunities to have another rib. You done ribbed out. <laughs> I'm sorry for laughing like that, but it's just a good thing. It, it, and it's not a... It's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's not a joking thing, but it's a good thing. They've ribbed out. Amen. So, the one who is a rib... Be thankful that I am a rib. I belong to somebody. Somebody's going to find me soon. They're going to go through life and they're going to get tired of going through life limped because if you're missing a rib, you're not 100% whole. You're limping. You're limping. Your breathing is off. Your rhythm <laughs> is off. <laughs> How did I get here? I got to get out of this place. I've got to get somebody to pray me out of this place. Pastor Cooper, pray me out of this place. Pray me out of this spot. I need to get up out of here. Amen. We need to move and shift to something different. Amen. Amen. I, I think I walked in it, just wanted to kind of bring us up to where we were. But Father, we thank you today that we are not going to tarry here any longer we're not going to tarry here any longer and father we're going to deal with the concrete faith faith which is not phased by the doubts of others father give us strength give us understanding give us the wisdom to articulate your word in the way that you would give it us we thank you for it now we're not here for showboating we're not here for any accolade we're just simply here to expound on your word and that your word would cause faith to take a leap, cause faith to dance because someone finally gets it in Jesus' name. 
The Lord says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. That's Jeremiah 29 and 11. And we expect your life to change for better forever. You must expect the same. Uh, something we have here, we want you to know that uh, what you believe in will determine everything about you and where you will end. What you believe in will determine everything about you and where you will end. Let's look at our overall topic again. Our overall topic says concrete faith, faith which is not phased by the doubts of others. Faith which is not phased by the doubts of others, that the concrete faith. And then here for our subtopic, what you believe in will determine everything about you and where you will end. Everybody's not looking at you like that. Everybody doesn't understand you like that. Everybody does, cannot see what you believe in. You only show them a microcosm of you, just one little snippet of you. So don't always expect them to know you like that and that they got you. They don't know you like that. You know you, but you know that when you went to Mookie's house because get your hair braided, that was just one little thing. But what you believe in, they don't know what you believe in. They don't know all of that about you. What you believe in will determine everything about you and where you will end. But they won't know that because you got your hair done. They won't know that because you bought some new shoes. They will not know that because you bought a new outfit. So what? You have some weave in your hair. They're not going to know that about you because of that. They're not going to know because you're dressed up looking good. They're not going to know because you got a flat tire with your car and you sat side of the road. They're not going to know that. What you believe in will determine everything about you and where you will end. I was reading a passage of scripture just the other day, and uh, all of us, we so often judge things by what our eyes tell us. We make judgment call by how a situation looks. We look at the situation, we make a judgment call. We look at how you responded, we make a judgment call. We look at you, you, you there you are waving your hand and help, you know, and we don't know that you're saying help. But we make a judgment call. We don't always come to help. We just assume that, you know, you're a beggar. We assume that you're on the streets. We assume that you wasted and flaunted all of your resources. And uh, a long time ago, and, 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 and no, this is... Yeah, this is, this is I, I have to ask the Lord, Lord, do I tell this? Do I tell this? I, I, but anyway, long time ago, while I was in my sins, while I was in my sins and I was in a house of ill repute, <laughs> that's what I'll call it. I was in my sins in a house of ill repute and I saw somebody and I assumed somebody was there because of, out of the pleasure of what they wanted to do, they really wanted to do what they were doing. And it was not a good thing that they were doing. And, but they were in this house of ill repute and, um, that it wasn't doing what everybody else was doing, but it was in the house of ill repute. So somehow or another, that person and I began to talk, began to ask them, why are you here? What you're doing here? Oh, listen, I, I just need a job. All I need is a job. This is not me. I don't do what those, those other people do. I'm just here. Matter of fact, I'm in school. I'm trying to get my degree, but I definitely need a job. I look here, look there, couldn't find nothing, nowhere. I've got to pay my tuitions and I don't have no other means to do it. This is what I've known and they gave me a job to do this, but I'm not going to do that. But I was just, I was just, uh, what was it? I think it was, uh, serve, serve people things. And, uh, yeah, I say that because automatically you want to judge things with your eyes. And you make the assumption that everything is sinful, everything is wrong, everything is just totally ungodly, everything is unfitting, and everything is just a, you're, you're in a house of irrepute. So everything that's in the house of irrepute is just irreputes. <laughs> there are irreputes in the house of irreputes, all right? And so you would make that assumption. And the Lord says, don't judge things with what you see. He said, He will not, He will not 
and you can go look at it for yourself in Isaiah chapter 11. Isaiah chapter 11, somewhere I think around about three, verse three or verse four. He will not judge things. He will not, he will not make judgment based upon what he see with his eyes, but he will make judgment based upon righteousness. Righteousness. Righteousness must be the foundation of how you believe this thing. Righteousness must be the foundation of what you stand on. He's not going to run and reprove things based upon what he's heard. And that's when you remember Jesus, when Jesus was ministering and uh, somebody runs to him. We caught this woman in adultery. We saw her in the very act. We caught her. He's listening. They found her. They caught her in the very act. Moses told us, if this happened, stone them. We, everybody here brought our stones and we brought the woman. What say ye of this matter? What say you of this matter? All right. We have our stones. We have some stones for you too because you can't get out of this, Jesus. It's fine. But let him that be without sin cast the first stone. <laughs> let him that be without sin cast the first stone. If that's not making reproof out of righteousness, not based upon what you hear, not based upon what you see, but what you hear, everybody drop their stones. Matter of fact, take the stones with, don't even drop them, just take them back on, take them on back with you. And hold them for another day because you're not going to stone here. So just, just go on with you. Take, take the stones with you. We're not stoning. This is not the stoning day. Everybody's gone. Woman, where are your accusers? They're all gone, Lord. I guess she's not waiting for him to accuse her. Neither do I accuse you. Go and sin no more. Oftentimes, we want to make evil decisions, evil, just, just cast stones at you and put your name on a billboard of scandal uh huh. as if we have clean hands as if we have never done any evil and Jesus is saying if your hands are clean then stone her you have every right I'm not going against the word if you if your hands are clean stone her and nobody was in the crowd who and they were telling the truth evidently everybody in the crowd had to tell the truth because the word held them to that don't you lie to me. Tell the truth. He that be without sin, let him cast the first stone. Everybody knew that they were sinners. And nobody can cast a stone. So while you're looking at Lottie and somebody looking at Layla, somebody looking at Evelyn, somebody looking at Sandy, nobody can cast a stone. Why? Because they have their own issues. May not be what uh, they were doing there, but they have their own issues. Jesus said, neither do I condemn you but go and sin no more stop it today go and sin no more so he's telling us don't judge things uh, uh, by what you see with your eyes don't be ready to condemn them by what you see with your eyes and hear with your ears but let it be a righteous judgment let the thing that you say and do be righteous and this is why we're here today at the word what you believe in will determine everything about you and where you will end up so our foundation has got to be right. Our foundation has got to be spot on. The foundation of Zeddy, the foundation of Layla, the foundation of Evelyn, the, the core belief system that runs deep through Evelyn. Yeah. You remember somebody saying that, I think they did a movie or so. I don't know what they did, but they did something that you are not your hair. You, you, you're not your hair. You're not that outward appearance that everybody look at. Yes, you're going to have some struggles and you're going to have some bad hair day and you're going to have some good hair day. You're going to have some days that you're going to like, oh my God, just get it cut off. I don't care about it. I don't want it. But then there's some other day you're going to be thankful for it. And, and, and you can't judge based upon what you're going through right then. But you have to have something in your life. They say, this is what I believe, and I'm not shaking. This is what I believe, and I'm not giving up. This is what I believe, and I don't care what comes my way. I am unmovable. Always abounding in this right here. 
And this what this lesson is about today. And that you study to be quiet. I don't always want to be loud and have the last word. I, I, I know they want you, they want to empower you so that you can say what you want to say, and then people listen to you, and it's right that they should listen to you. But don't be so quick and happy and ready to, to just have the last word or just have a say so. You don't always have to have a, a, a say so in the matter, Lakeisha. Because if you keep silent, that is not going to diminish you of your education. If you keep silent, that's not going to diminish you of who you are. If you keep silent, that's not going to rob you of your anointing. Sometimes when you open your mouth, people already know, oh, Lord, Jesus. Oh, Lord. We're in for the long haul. Oh, Jesus, help us, Lord. And then they get all discouraged. You just said two words, two little things out of your mouth. They, people can gauge you by what you say. That you studied to be quiet. This is not so. I mean, anytime you got to study to do something, learn to do something, somebody got to teach you to do something, that's the right thing to do because nobody has to teach you to talk. Nobody has to teach you to cry. Nobody has to teach you to curse. Nobody has to teach you to swear. Nobody has to teach you to do wrong. Nobody has to teach you to do anything ungodly. But if it's a godly thing, if it's a right thing, if it's a thing that's after the heart of God, somebody's got to teach you how to do it. And he says here that you study to be quiet. He's trying to let you know there's an anointing that comes when you can be quiet. You think Moses was a loud, cantankerous fella? Moses was not a loud, cantankerous fella. Moses was one of the meekest men on the earth. Moses didn't always have to have the last word. Moses was a listener. Moses was a quiet individual. He was observant. He wasn't always loud. Somebody told me an empty wagon makes a lot of noise. He was always quiet, observant. And that you study to be quiet. You can come in the presence of the Lord when you're quiet. <laughs> Ah, Jesus. And oftentimes when he meets you, he doesn't meet you oftentimes in a whole bunch of friends. A lot of times he meets you when you're by yourself, when you're alone. And there is no noise coming out of you. When you're alone, in a time of meditation, alone, in, in, in sleep zone, alone. And, and you are leaving a place of stress and anger and, and fretting and doubt and intimidation or whatever is coming out of your mouth or out of your ears or out of your thought, you're not even emanating any thoughts at this point. The only thing that you're doing is you're in a deep ram sleep. Sometimes that's where he have to visit us when we have quiet down. If God would uh, didn't like quiet, he would meet you when you're loud. He would come to you every time that you're loud. He doesn't always show up when you're loud. But there are too many testimonies shows us that he shows up when they were quiet, when they were sleeping, when they were exhausted. He'll show up. And that you study to be quiet and to do your own business, to work with your own hands as we command you. We're trying to tell you something. Work with your own hand. Don't look for handouts. Don't let people be always trying to do. No, 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 no. Hold up. My faith, and this is my me building faith, concrete faith. This is me building faith. I'm I'm a, I'm a study to be quiet. I'm gonna be observant. I'm gonna do my own business. I'm gonna be responsible for me, and those that are in my house. I'm, that's my first uh, a responsibility of taking care of that, and to work with my own hands. Yeah, I'm working my own hands, not looking for handout, willing to work. Whatever I find, whatever I, whatever my hand finds to do, I'm going to do it in the name of the Lord. And there's another scripture that tells us that you will be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters who bring forth his uh, 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 fruit in his season. His leaves will not wither. Uh -huh. And whatsoever he doeth, 
I, I can't quote it. I'm sorry, but I'll tell you where it's going at. Just go to Psalms 1 and you begin to read Psalms 1 and then just read that, 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 that passage and you'll see that it says, whatsoever he doeth, whatsoever he doeth, it shall prosper. That means that whatever the righteous do, it shall prosper. But there are people who are not righteous. But like what they're doing is prospering, but your seed dies. The world's prospering, but your seed took a nosedive. The thing you put your hands to withered. The thing you tried to grow died. You, you tried to have a green thumb and, 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 and plant some flowers and they died. You tried to plant crop and they died. And you did these things and they died. Hold up. Wait a minute. Something is wrong with that. Because the scripture says, whatsoever you do it, it shall prosper. Then how come it's not prospering? Something is wrong. If you've been born in wrong, born in negativity, born in doing things the wrong way, and everybody who came on the scene deviated from the plan of God, from the original plan of God, and then you're going to come up thinking that the thing that you're doing right now is right. Because you came into this life seeing it done. You seen them uh, 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 put the clothes there or on, left feet first, and then the right feet in, or whatever, whatever. And, and you did that. You followed suit, thinking that was the right way. But just suppose everything you were doing was the wrong way. Just suppose instead of you just loud and jumping and jumping and jerking and ah, ah, ah. Suppose God was not moved by that. But God is moved when you just simply just lift your hands and just meditate on him. God, I love you. With everything that was in me, I love you. I love you. And you make it personal. I just love you, Lord. I just love you. I'm not looking for nothing, but I just love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. And, and made it a quiet moment with him. Now see how he rushes in and do things not based on your feelings not based on your emotions not based on your appetite but just based on truth and when you make it about truth the foundation of truth it always works for you work with your own hands and we command you that ye may walk honestly 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 toward them that are without oftentimes we want to walk honestly amongst those who do what we do we want to walk honestly with those people who go to church like we go to church, who pray like we pray, who does those things. We we want to we want to look honest in their eyes, but that didn't say that. It said, "But that ye may walk honestly toward them that are without." They don't even know this God. They don't even know the God you serve. You walk honestly, of course, among everybody. Everybody, you walk honest, and when it says that, that's the least of them. And if you're going to do honestly in the midst of the least of them, you're definitely going to do honesty in the most of them. Do honesty. Walk in it. Walk in it. Embrace it. Don't leave it. Don't deviate from it. And this building the capacity to do more. The thing that I'm telling you now is building in you the capacity to do more in God. You're not going to open blinded eyes and unstop deaf ears just because you just want to. But you will open blind eyes, unstop deaf ears, and heal the sick, and even raise the dead, providing you've been operating on a foundation of truth. I was uh, looking at some things along in the scripture. And in the scripture, I was looking at Jesus' life. And in Jesus' life, when he died, there was nobody there that could call Jesus back. Nobody, when Jesus died, nobody could call him out of the grave. There was nobody able to call him out of the grave. But now I'm thankful because the Bible said God raised up Jesus from the dead. God brought him out of the tomb. God did that for him. And I'm so grateful to Father that he didn't let a man do it. He said, I got this one. Father raised up Jesus. Father quickened him. 
and brought him up out of the grave. Jesus, that is. When Lazarus died, Jesus was there to bring him back. Lazarus was so, uh, uh, Jesus was, says, this sickness is not unto death, but that the glory of God might be revealed. Jesus was standing at the right moment to bring him back. Matter of fact, Jesus allowed Aunt Lazarus to die. Jesus didn't go running to him when the man was sick. He could have went there. And the thing is, Mary knew this. Martha knew this. That when Lazarus was sick, if you get Jesus, he'll come and he'll live again. Go get him. But he deliberately would not come until he knew that Lazarus was dead. And when he knew Lazarus was dead, and for a while, then he went to see them. And when he went there, this is what he, he, he knew. This is, this is something about this faith. This, and that's why we're calling it that what you believe in will determine everything about you and where you will end up. And then we also talk about concrete faith, faith which is not phased by the doubts of others. Why? Because when he went to the graveside of Lazarus, notice, did he put anybody out? Everybody was in there with them, with, with Mary. Everybody was there. Everybody was doubting. There were people that were doubting, people that were mourning, and oh, 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 they were wailing. They were going off and going on, and they were in it. They were in it. They were in it. They were in it deep, crying and wailing and doing whatever they did during that time. And they were looking at him strange when he went to the graves out of Lazarus. And he said, Father, I thank thee. I thank thee that you hear me and you hear me every time I call and I'm standing here for the sake of these that they might believe. And he tells them to take the stone away. You already know their doubt levels is up. You already know that they're not with that. You already know the setting. Whether they are loud with their doubt or silent with their doubt. But he did not even attack their doubt. He know that doubt was in the house. When you can get to a place in your life that you are not phased, Nicole, by the doubts of others, that's what this lesson about. When you are not phased by their doubt, when I'm not phased by Sandy Beach's doubt, if you have any, I'm not phased by Rosemary doubt. If, if Rosemary got doubt, then that's her situation. But over here, over here, I'm not worried about your doubt because your doubt's not going to change my faith. Your doubts are not going to change what God has said to me. If I know that God said, go and preach to Nineveh, I'm going to preach to Nineveh. God said, go, because this sickness is not unto death, but that the glory of God might be revealed. That's all I need to know. Because somebody got to be on this side to call him. And the one that's going to call him must have the faith. Everybody faith is not going to be there. And it's not everybody's responsibility to call. But it was Jesus' responsibility because he said that the, that the glory of God might be revealed. And to these that are believing, these that are standing around, I need to give you something to know that God is real. You've been standing, you've been crying, you've been wailing in, you've been going on, and you've been supporting Martha in her crying, supporting Mary in her crying, and weeping over that brother who's deceased now. I want to give you something to cry about. I want to show you something. So he went there with the, the mind, the mindset. I know doubt is in the house, but I'm not going to let doubt determine my outcome. I don't have to silence it. I don't have to tell them to shut up. I don't have to tell you how to go someplace else. Don't have to do that. Because it's getting ready to work. Oftentimes we teach people, no, you got to saturate the atmosphere. The atmosphere has got to be right. You, the atmosphere has got to be right in order for God to work. The atmosphere has got to be right. And we need everybody in the house to have some faith. Everybody in the house have some faith. But well, that's not what it says here. So we got to go back to our theology we got to go back deep within our theology and find out what is really happening here. There was doubters in the house. Everybody in the house were not believers. There were some doubters here at this place. And he steps in in the midst of the doubt, but he would not let the doubt change the narrative of the outcome. He already knew that the outcome, God's going to raise him. 
The outcome, God's bringing him back. And I'm not going to let your doubt change that. Because God's going to have the last say so here. And that's what we have to come into the place was that when you have been in the presence of God, whether you are praying and talking to him, you've been seeking his face and God gave you one word, do it. God gave you one word, go. God gave you one word, speak it. God gave you one word, whatever that word is. And you know it's God. Let nobody shake your faith. You know the outcome already. You know going to be some doubters. They're going to look at you strange. And you know the devil going to be there. You better not do that. You better not do that. Don't you do that. They're going to laugh at you. They're going to laugh at you to scorn. You know what they do for liars. You know, you already know. He ain't getting up. People don't get up. People don't come back. I got him. He's not coming back. Nobody come back from the grave. Nobody do that. By this time, he stink. Ah, look at the devil. The devil's talking. But your faith should never be predicated based upon somebody else's doubt and their fears or their insecurities. And Jesus just prayed and thanked God for that moment. And he said, uh, 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 roll the stone. Get, get those stones out of the way. Lazarus, come here. <laughs> they looking at Jesus like, you done lost your mind. Jesus, you done lost your mind. What's that noise I hear? And Lazarus is jumping his eyes. <laughs> Zeddy Anderson. Lazarus is jumping inside the tomb. There's some movement inside the tomb. And then he steps out. And then Jesus said, loose him. See, y'all done built your own narrative about him. You done built your own story about him. You done told him that he's not getting up. You done told him he's going to be dead and he's going to stay dead. He's not coming up. Nobody comes out after this. Nobody rises after this. Nobody lives after cancer. Nobody lives after stage four cancer. Nobody else. Nobody else. This is it. And Jesus said, you go there and you loose him. Take those grave clothes off. You put the grave clothes on him. Now you take it off. Because it's not the grave clothes that killed him. But you put the grave clothes, you dressed him for the hour. You dressed him for death. Now you go take it off of him. We're so busy dressing people for death. We're so people dressing people for the hour. Jesus said, loose him. I called him. He came. Now you loose him. And let him go free. <laughs> take your mouth off of him. Take the negative, take that, all that ungodly, take it off of him. Loose him. And let him go free. Who am I talking to today? Who, who am I talking to today? Who, who am I talking to? Yeah, so you got to loose the situation. You got to take your mouth off the situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And to work with your own hands as we command you, that ye may walk honestly toward them that are without and that ye may have lack of nothing. That ye, you may have lack of nothing. Who is this to? It's to the righteousness of God. It is to the children of God. And this is where we're building the foundation of righteousness. See, and the children of God must be taught how to keep quiet. How to be observant. Taught how to trust God in the midst of adversity. Taught to trust God with their words. When it don't look good, you trust them. When it don't sound good, you trust him. When it goes against the grain, you trust him. You build your hope on nothing less but the Jesus blood. His righteousness, not yours, not mine. Jesus. Because even here, I need him. I need him. And I often have to tell him, Lord, I can't do this. This is up to you. Lord, would you heal? I'm praying for my mother. Lord, I need you to do this. I need you to I need you to do this. What do I do in this manner? I see mom's right leg that was paralyzed and have no life to it. I see it moving now, Jennifer. I see that I see that leg that was moving now. I said mama raised the leg and she would normally raise the left uh -huh, that didn't have the problem, but then I see the the right one coming up. Like, what the world? 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, and, and then I would often tickle the right foot under her right foot. She would just look at me like I done lost my rabbit mind. I'm tickling her up under her foot and there's no movement. And I tickle the right one and the left one and then she's giggling and moving. Hey, cut that out. Hey, leave my foot alone. <laughs> mama got life, y'all. Mama got life. I'm telling you, mama got life. I'm tickling her up under her left foot. Hey, leave me alone. Stop that. And then when I would tickle up under her right foot, she wouldn't say nothing. She'd look at me like I done lost my mind. What you doing? I went there this morning. <laughs> That's right. I went there this morning, Pastor Cooper. And I was tickling her up under her right foot. Now she's jumping. Hey, hey, hey. Leave my foot alone. <laughs> I say, you know what? We good now. We good. I like this. I like what I see. Tickle the right, the, the left one. And again, she's jumping. Hey, 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 hey. Cut that out. Cut that out. I'm seeing God doing something right before my very eyes. Things are happening. See, oftentimes we want that right now. Right now, right now. Uh, uh, impromptu, that, 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 that spontaneous uh, 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 comeback. Sometimes it's a slow growth thing. Sometimes we walking in it in a slow growth. I'm, I didn't say all the time. Trust me, I'm not saying all the time. Sometimes God says, no, you're going to walk this one out for a long time. Sometimes he might say just for a period of time. <laughs> However he want to do it, it's on him. But whenever he do it, let him do it. And until then, don't be impatient. Until then, don't throw in the towel. Until then, don't go doing your own thing. Until then, stay parked. Until then, you don't go run gallivanting all over. Just stay put. God knows exactly what he's doing. All we can do is pray the prayer of faith. Trust God. The healing is not me. I'm not the one that heals. I'm not the one, I'm not the miracle worker, but the miracle worker lives inside. I'm not the healer, but the healer lives inside. And I'm not going to question his authority. I would love to, uh, Lord, you mean to tell me I don't have it right? I don't have it right? I'm teaching people, no, but, but what, I have to trust his judgment. I have to trust God. And that's what I'm telling you. And that's what we've got to learn, to trust him. Trust God. Trust him today. Trust him. Trust Jesus. That's all. Just trust him. Simply trust him. That ye may walk honestly toward them that are without. And that ye may have lack of nothing. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. That ye sorrow not when somebody die. That ye sorrow not. That you will not go in a hizzy. That you will not, oh, yes, you will lose some moments of friendship because they are no longer there. You're going to feel a vacancy. Yes, you're going to feel all these things. A vacancy. Yeah. We're going to miss this. We're going to miss that. And they're no longer going to be able to be here. And I'm no longer going to hear their voices and, and feel their embrace and the hugs. And going to, no longer going to be able to do those things that we're so used to doing and accustomed to doing for X number of years. We're not going to be able to do that thing. So, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren concerning them which are asleep. And it did not say dead. The Bible does not use the word dead, just like the Bible did not use dead concerning Lazarus. But Jesus did come back because he had some disciples who just did not believe him. Jesus said, let's go and wake Lazarus out of his sleep. <laughs> well, Lord, if he's sleeping, he doeth well. It's one of his disciples. If he's sleeping, he doeth well. They didn't know what had taken place. And Jesus is basically saying, I know where the departed body, body is. Hold on. I know where the departed spirit is, not the body, because the body is still here. I know where the departed spirit is. And that spirit that was in Lazarus, that departed from him, it went to sleep. And Lazarus is sleep. And when one goes asleep in our family that we cannot wake up physically, we shake him, we shake a pulse, we check the heartbeat, and there is no heartbeat. There is no pulse. And they're in a deep REM sleep that we're not used to. And we call it dead. But Jesus says sleep. Because the righteous don't die. 
the righteous sleeps. Jesus says, Lazarus is sleep. Let's go so that we might wake him out of his sleep. And notice, the world can't wake him out of his sleep. Jesus said that I might come and awake him out of his sleep. Somebody's got to call Jesus. He says, come, wake my brother out of his sleep. And that's not to everybody, but Jesus said, let us go. I want to teach you something, fellas. I'm going to give you my spirit, but I want to teach you something because I'm going to want you to do this at some point. But let's, but you got to do it. You don't, you don't do it for money. You don't do it for your own pleasure. You don't do it for your own fame. You don't do it so you get the glory. And notice, he's not doing it for money. He's not doing it for his own fame. He's doing it that the glory of God might be revealed. That's the purpose, that the glory of God, when Lazarus got up, he got up because it was the glory of God being revealed. Now he went about Jesus. It wasn't about any of that. That the glory of God might be revealed to who? To those that were standing around so that they may see the power of God at work. That they might know that the power of God works here. You're not calling them back just to be calling them back. You're not doing these things just to be doing it because you want people to see how powerful you are and that you're all that. No, that's not why he's going to come back. If it's about God, yeah. If it's about you, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm so sorry. I, I'm, I'm sorry to bust your bubble. It's not about you. <laughs> and Jesus said that the glory of God might be revealed in this matter. And he calls it. He comes. And when he comes, he said, loose him and let him go. Notice the story. God raised Jesus. There's nobody else can raise Jesus. God raised Jesus. Jesus raised Lazarus. And then now that disciples are getting it, Peter is doing something and somebody dies, Dorcas dies, and, and the people, they were believers and they're praying, Dorcas, come back, come back, Dorcas, come back, come back, Dorcas. Dorcas not coming back. Somebody said, hey, 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 why don't you go get Peter? He was one of the disciples. He walked with Jesus. Go get him. He's in the next town over. They went and got Peter. Peter, come. This woman, Dorcas, has been here for us, has built us this, has done these things, has taught our children, has prayed for us when we were going through. Don't let Dorcas leave like this. The community, don't let her die like this. She's been good to us, Peter. Peter goes in the room, put everybody out. Put everybody out of the room. Peter want to save him. Peter want to, uh, that's Peter. Peter's protecting his faith. Peter is protecting him. You better protect you. It ain't about the ones on the outside. Let the ones on the outside to do what they're doing. You protect you. And Peter is protecting him. Goes in there where she's at. Kneels down. And talk to God. His, uh, uh, talk to Jesus. His tutor. His, 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 his leader. His guy. His master. His provider. And then he calls Dorcas. Somebody got to be on this side who believe God and trust God who's going to call somebody who's asleep. Dorcas, come here. Dorcas sets up. <laughs> then he tells them what to do. Take care of Dorcas and Dorcas is taken care of. And you know the rest of the story. Paul comes on the scene. Paul's this preacher. He's a long-term preacher. Preaching for hours. People are there listening for hours. And so all that gibberish and all that craziness that people are talking about, people ex extension, uh, what's it? That, uh, uh, yeah, the extension span, their uh, attention span. Their attention span is only about 13 minutes. 15 minutes, 30, and then you're not getting 30 minutes. Their, their attention span is about uh, 22 minutes. And after that, they're going to do what they want to do because that's what they As long as you teach them that, that's what they're going to do. If you teach them their attention span is three minutes, that's what you're going to get. If you teach them their attention span is five minutes, that's what you're going to get. If you teach them that their attention span is 22 minute point nine, that's what you're going to get. If you teach them, then you stay there until you get it. Stay there. 
until however long it takes, you stay there. Matter of fact, you stay and hear the conclusion of the whole matter. If you teach them that, that's what they're going to do. They're going to hear the conclusion of the whole matter. If the whole matter takes two hours, they're going to stay for two hours. Listen to the conclusion of the whole matter because they're going to realize there's something in there for me. When you feed them garbage, they're going to get garbage. They're going to believe garbage. When you feed them the truth, they're going to believe in the truth. They're going to walk in the truth. Stop telling people certain things that because you don't want to be there. But you tell them, oh, you're going to look at a game for four hours, five hours, six hours, and they're going to do it. No, start telling them you're going to sit there and hear the word of the Lord because it's necessary. You're going to need this. And for however long it takes, and they're going to do it. Amen. That's enough said about that. My time is running out. I don't want to be like Paul. Well, <laughs> I do want to be like Paul, but Paul taught that particular day. All day, the man fell out the, the window, broke his neck, broke his neck, and died. Paul went down where he was. Paul prayed, lifted him up, prayed, and the man came back with a healed neck. Healed neck. He still had sleep problems. But he came back with a heel neck. Amen. And so what am I saying? Somebody got to be on this side to be able to call it and know that God is able to do the impossible. When you know that God is able to do the impossible, it doesn't matter where you are. You can call that person. You can call that thing. You can call that thing that be not as if it is right now. You can call it into existence if you do that. But you cannot become inundated with things around you, with people around you, with the doubters over there and the haters and behind you and the backstabbers and the, and, and, and the, all these other, no, don't, don't, don't inundate yourself with that. Don't even, don't even chew on their curriculum. Don't even chew on their thesis. Don't even chew on their epistles. Don't do it. And that's why Daniel was able to do what Daniel did because he said, listen, I know we're in Babylon fellows, but we're not going to eat their food. Which, which which had to do with doctrine. We're not going to bow to their God. We're not because it, it, it's I. We're, we're not going to do any of those things. We're not doing that. We're going to do something totally different. And you got to realize you can't eat everything. You can't be everybody. And I, and I know they enter. They open up the internet. Yeah, yeah. And everybody want to preach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every, and, and then their messages sound good. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But everybody's message is not the same. Everybody not going to give you the same thing. Some do it for money. You know that some people preachers for money. Some people preachers for whatever, whatever they're preaching for. I'm not here to knock any of them, but I'm saying be careful. You can't chew on everything. Everything is not going to be what you need in order for you to make it. Let me get through this. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them that which are asleep, that you saw or not, even as others which have no hope. You have hope. There are some that don't have any hope, but you have hope. And your hope is, this is what your hope is. Let me tell you what your hope is. Your hope is this. For if we believe that Jesus died, do you believe that? Let me ask you that question. You answer it yourself. Do you believe that Jesus died? One, that he died. Two, that he rose again. Do you believe that Jesus died and rose again? Now, now, I know it was God that raised him, but do you believe that he died and rose again? Yes. Even so them, even so them also will sleep in Jesus. If you are sleeping while you're in Jesus, here's the word. Even so them also will sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. God's going to raise them up also. If you're in Jesus and this is your belief, that's why the foundation of what you believe has got to be solid. Don't let nobody shake this. Don't let nobody toy with this. Don't let nobody run off with this. Don't let them feed you some other curriculum and you start doubting this. Don't let them give you something else and you say, hmm, there is no Jesus. There is no God. There's no heaven and there's no hell. Earth is going to be forever. And, the, and, and you keep going on with all these craziness and you begin to doubt this and you're toying with this. You're toying with your faith. You're toying with the, the, with the very rudiments of your faith. Don't do that. Don't let anybody give you anything. You can't take everybody's stuff. Everybody's going to teach differently. Everybody don't believe the same thing. That's why they're going to teach differently. If you, and, and I don't have nothing against the, uh, uh, and yes, I said that. 
I know the difference because the Catholics, you, you, you may not like the word Catholic, but what they do, I know what they're deviating. They're deviating and, and they want you to worship Mary. I, I know, I know. But there's some stuff that they do that you're not going to always go with. But you know what? You know, when it comes to this right here, when it comes to, hear me out on this. When it comes to the Catholics, they believe this. The Catholics believe in verse 14. 14 is, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. The Catholics believe this. The Episcopalian believe this. The Baptists believe this. The Methodists believe this. That's right. Listen to me. Listen to me. I'm going somewhere. They believe this. And there's a lot of them that believe this. And But it's not just limited there. They believe in the Father, the Son. They believe in the Holy Ghost. They believe this. They believe in the Trinity. But then there's some churches that look like you, act like you, do some of the same thing you do, but they don't believe this. But if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which sleep which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. The Jesus only have a problem with God. The Jesus only have a problem with some thing that is, is, is different from what you believe. And they tell you, we believe in Jesus only. He, he is the only one. So they done got rid of God. Then there's others. Russellism. There is uh, Mormonism. There's a lot of them that just don't believe what you believe. But they have some curriculum. When you look at their curriculum, their curriculum looks so tasty. and look like it can line up with yours. But they deviate. They deviate in a lot of ways. And if you're not careful, you start reading in some curriculum that is not what you believe in. It's not. And what it's going to do is going to mess up your foundation. You're going to believe this right here. And then you're going to believe some Russellism. And you're going to believe some other stuff. And you're going to believe some other stuff because the writings is good. And you then took all this stuff and compiled it together. And then you're going to be confused because one going to say something different. Somebody else going to say that you, 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 you were uh, evolved into it. You will naturally evolve into it at some point and something else going to say something different and you're going to be messed up. Be careful of what you digest, that what you take into your spiritual man, be careful because it would mess you up. I'm just saying. Let me finish this lesson. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. No matter what you do, no matter what you do, for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and which we are those of us who will remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. You are not going to stop them. When it's time for them to come, they're coming. You're not going to stop them. They're not, you're not going to stop them from getting up. They're going to get up when it's time to get up. God is not doing this and just forget all about them. Their living is never in vain. God is not going to allow their living to be in vain. That's why you got work to do right now while there's breath in your body. While there's breath in your body and there's a word in you, it's your turn now. And here's the thing. the Bible, In the Bible, Isaiah came to a point in his life. He said it was in the year that King Uzziah died. What? It's in the year, the same year, that King Uzzai died. Now all this time he's preaching, all this time, whatever he was doing, whatever Isaiah was doing, he needed an encounter with the Lord. He could not be greater. He could not do any little great thing until he had a counter encounter with the Lord. He says, this is writing, it was in the year that King Uzzai died that I also saw the Lord. He was high and lifted up and his train filled the temple. Sometime in order for you to be great and get a shifting and go another further, your Uzzai has got to die. Yeah, chew on that. Not gonna hurt you. 
But this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we wish are alive and remain to the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. But the Lord himself, himself, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel. Angel. He's not coming alone. He's coming with the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall raise first. The dead in Christ. This is where he said the dead in Christ. Any other time it was asleep. But this is where he said the dead in Christ shall arise first. Why? Because when they died from in the natural, they died in Christ. They did not backslide. They were yet in Christ, resting, and they will rise first. Then we which are alive, still living, uh, still living, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So those persons who have a problem with clouds, no person who have a problem with air, you're going to meet him in the cloud and in the air. And so shall we ever be, not in the cloud, but it says with the Lord. You're not going to be living in the air. You were never designed to live in the air. You were never designed to live in the clouds. You were designed to live on the earth. And Jesus says, uh, John says, I saw a new Jerusalem, a new Jerusalem coming down from God. He saw a new Jerusalem coming down. Why? Because this earth that you're on now is going to be done away with. It's going to pass away with a fervent heat. And what the Lord is doing, his people that belong to him, he's snatching from here. He have his own way of getting them out of here. You may not understand fully how he's going to do it, but those that would sleep in him, die in him, he has a place where he takes them and accepts them. But then what he's going to do, he's going to put them in the new Jerusalem. There's a new heaven and a new earth, just like there's a heaven now, but that heaven is responsible to this earth. It's not one and the same. If we have an earth, we'll own it, but this, this earth needs to be inside of a heaven. But John says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth come down from God. God plans a permanent. It's permanent. I know people saying we're going to get to heaven. We're going to go to heaven. We're going to go to heaven. We're going to go to heaven. Baby, God has designed for you to dwell on the earth. And one reason for there to be a new heaven and a new earth that when this one is done away, he raised you up from this one to put you in the new earth, the new Jerusalem, the new existence place. Then what has happened to the new earth, heaven? Guess what? They already It's already going to be inhabited with those that God has designed for it. God have a plan that's mighty sweet. God doesn't have to change anything because he's perfect like that. Only an imperfect God will have to change his plans. An imperfect God would have to do something totally different. He's not doing anything different. He's just making his plan complete. And it's complete in us doing it right. It would have been complete if Adam had not ate. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not sorry. But had Adam not ate, it would have been complete. But because he ate, and it caused a little deviation in time, God said, listen, my plan has not changed based upon what you've done. No, no. I'm working on you. I'm not working on my plans. I'm working on you. I know my thoughts concerning you. I know what I'm going to do. And I know my thoughts are good. They are peace. They're not evil. I know what I'm doing. I've never had to deviate. I've never had to do something different. Because everything that I've designed was already in my mind. At the beginning. Did I want Adam to sin? No. Did Adam have to sin? No. That was a choice that he made. But because he made that choice, it did not take me by surprise. Lucifer, he was also checked. And he failed. There was many others who failed. And just as Lucifer was tested, he failed. Lazarus, I, uh, uh, Adam was checked. He failed. I also checked my son, Jesus. 
but he didn't fail. Jesus did not fail. He passed the test. And you know he passed the test. And he said, Father, if it be your will, let this cup pass for me. But nevertheless, don't let my will happen. Let your will be done. I want your will to be done. Lucifer came to him many times, tried to tease him and trick him and change him. <clears throat> he used the word on him. And that's how you're going to make it. When you use the word on Satan and say, no, 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 we're not doing that. We are not doing that. We're not doing it. We're doing the plan of God. And that's what I admonish. And I want to employ you to do the plan of God. Learn the plan of God. Learn the will of God. And learn that God, if he's perfect, why is he changing his plan? He's not changing his plan. There's nothing about his plan that's being changed. There's his, his plan being perfected in you because we are the one that's imperfect. But he's perfecting us. He allow our trials. He allow our testing. He allow those things we go through from day to day to perfect us. He's doing that. He's allowing that to happen to us. And those that will seek him is the one that he wants. It's just like the Lord says, for he tells Gideon, for the one that laps water like a dog, then you get them. But were the other people messed up? Were the others bad? They weren't bad people. But the one I'm going to choose, I'm going to choose from the lesser crowd. The smaller number. God have a choice in the matter too. His plan is that I want those persons who are going to choose me willingly. I, I know there's some wheat and, and the wheat belong to me, but there's some tares. The tears look like the wheat. The world not going to really know the difference. But I want that's what genuine. I want that's going to want me. If you want me, I'm going to want you. Of course I want you to want me, but if you want me, I want you to. But if you don't want me, then I don't want you to. I don't want you to. I'm not going to force you to want me. And that's what God is. He's not forcing the world to want him. Though that believed and, and is baptized shall be saved. But though that believe not, shall be damned that's his word to us and that's what we stand on oh man I can go on with that right there but my time says it's time to bring it in so I'm going to do that I'm going to do just that bring it in woman of God Deborah Cooper says nothing or no one can stop prophecy I know that's right I know that's right woman of God I know that's right listen Blessings to all of you. Father, I thank you for this time that you've given us. And we're not going to squander. We're not going to mess it up. We're not going to abuse it. We've gone over our time, but we thank you for this. Thank you for allowing us to come to this place. And I pray that you'll continue to advance these people in you. Father, as I speak into their life, I speak no more lack. I speak, God, that they'll raise up from the place that they've been. I, praise, I, I pray for elevation in them. I pray for growth in them. I speak life to them, Father. I speak healing to them and let their faith come alive. Let their faith take them to another level. Call them to believe you even more, Father. Call this faith that we were speaking on today, building on today, become concreted in their life. In the name of Jesus, that they will not doubt you when it comes to those that believe in you, that you died and that you rose again. Don't let them have problems with this. Oh, that they will trust you. And they, they're not going to worry that if they die, what's going to happen to me? This people right here, call them to know. Call them to know that you got them. That you have them. Providing that their life is in you. If their life is hid with you, those who are alive and remain, those who are in you, you got them. But if they are not in you, this is the time to get in Christ and stay there. Father, I thank you. And we bless you. Help us come in alignment to you. Help us to walk in your spirit and not fulfill the lust of our flesh. We thank you for this time in Jesus' name. Listen, God bless you. God keep your heavy smile upon you. Go in the strength of the Lord. We know that we, and just know that we love you. And again, pray for my family. Pray for my sister, uh, Lady Julie Hagen, and her family as um, she have lost, well, her husband went to sleep. Her husband went to sleep and um, and yeah, yeah. So he's in the hand of the Lord. It's the Lord's doing, not mine. It's not ours. It's the Lord's doing. And whatever the Lord wants to do, he know what to do and how to do it. So he went to sleep. And uh, we're not going to prevent them. We just know what the word says. Trust God. 
And that's what we're going to do. We're going to trust the Lord in this. God bless you. God keep you. Heaven smile upon you. Go in the strength of the Lord. Amen. And be blessed. Amen. Goodbye.